a lovely warm afternoon, a huge crowd at Semple Stadium. All Ireland quarter final to be refereed by the man from Cork, Cahill McAllister. And uh, Cahill was also in charge when the teams met in the league in Walsh Park, and that was just three months ago. Waterford won the toss, and they're going to play from right to left in the first half. Cahill McAllister has as his linesman today James McGrath and Barry Kelly, both of them from Westmeath. So switches and changes being made by Waterford in particular straight away, but for Galway it's Andy Smith and David Burke in midfield. You see Kevin Moran going to midfield along with uh, Shane O'Sullivan, at least for the throw-in. And let's see what develops from here. A place in the semi-finals at stake, and we now know as a result of the opening result here that whoever wins this particular match will be playing Kilkenny. And here straight away is Shane Welsh looking for a good start, and Shane Walsh was fouled on his way in, and it's going to be a free from the 20-metre line. Well, this is a player who got uh, a goal and four points from the team's last met down in Welsh Park. That was in the league. This isn't the big time, the championship itself. And Waterford looked for a bright opening. It's going to be interesting to see who's going to take the freeze here today for Waterford because they've got uh, Owen Kelly in their ranks. They've Porik Mahoney, who did absolutely nothing wrong, got 13 points in the Munster final. Yeah, Ger, I see Owen Kelly taking this, and I wouldn't be surprised knowing Owen Kelly over the years if he goes for a goal here straight away. Remember the match against Limerick when he attempted it? It was blocked on the line, but there was a goal a few seconds later. Kelly, opening minutes, having a go! Well stopped by the goalkeeper, James Scal comes back out, and it's in the back of the net! Planted in the back of the net! Shane Walsh, his fifth championship goal... Watched the number 14 coming in as it went up into the air, came from behind, got the stick to it, and made great connection. Hitting it there as he was with Owen Kelly, but I think it was Shane Walsh who got the goal. What a start. Well, spot on, Michael Dignett, who said he would go for a goal, he did. Well, that's a dream start. And away come Waterford once again. Kevin Moran coming on to it. And that has gone sailing over the bar. Kevin Moore and the 24-year-old from De La Salle getting Waterford's second score. And they make the perfect start to this All-Ireland quarter-final. A goal and a point up. And not even two minutes gone. Yeah, and the two men involved there, Brick Walsh and Kevin Moore. The two of them outstanding, I thought, against Tipperary on a very badly beaten team the last day. And Kevin Moore is really up for it in the middle field. He had a tussle with David Burke off the ball and John Milan ran into him as well. And Waterford seemed to have left the last day behind them. That's Porik Mahoney, today wearing a blue helmet, getting it into the middle of the field here. It's collected here by Malumphy, ready to take off. All heart and determination from an early start here. They want to lay down a marker, set an example, but not with that particular shot. Just tailing to the left. First wide of the match for Waterford, but what a very, very bright opening for them. And Galway must be a little bit shell-shocked. But uh, John McIntyre was saying in his pre-match interview he was anticipating that they would, that is, Waterford would come at Galway all guns blazing, as it were. Tucked out there by James Skehill. That's out over the line, and it's going to be a Waterford ball. Not a good puck out. Back it comes here towards Michael Brick Welsh. Forward towards John Milan, then broke there towards Prendergast. That's Seamus Prendergast in once again towards Shane Welsh. Shane Kavanagh coming across here, the Galway full back. Good clearance this time. Rising for it, Kevin Moran. Got a little smack on the back of the head there as he was challenging for that ball. I think it was Joe Gantley who came in on top of him. Yeah, Jaron, very interesting early on. Um, Stephen Malumphy started corner forward but has withdrawn way out the field and just left Owen Kelly and, and Shane Walsh inside. And Owen Kelly is even out 50 yards. So, you know, maybe Watford learned from tip the last day, just creating a load of space for their inside uh, full forward line and drawing everybody else out the field. And Galway falling for it, which I'm surprised with. They're all following their men way, way out the field. This line ball to be taken here by David Burke. Big one down towards Joe Canning. Let's it run on, and he fails to hold on to it. And that's going to be a puck out for the Dacia. So much expected always when Joe Canning is in the thick of the action there. And with Canning and Davy and Hayes up front between them, they have 32 goals in the championship scored. Some tally. Yeah, and Ger, just a few changes, I suppose, to let people know. David O'Sullivan has gone back left half back. Shane Sullivan has gone to midfield, along with Kevin Moran. John Milan at centre forward. You know, Stephen Malumphy in the corner. So a lot of changes from Waterford. Well, as long as they know where they're meant to be playing. That's taken down here by Tony Brown. Forward there towards Seamus Prendergast. Prendergast trying to link up with the colleague, succeeds. That colleague is Shane O'Sullivan. And Shane O'Sullivan, the Valley Gunner, goes down. 
under the weight of the challenge there and the referee pointing in the general direction of the Galway goal. Just watch it again here as he was wrestled around there by Adrian Cullinan. Yeah, Probably that's what. Sorry, Joe. That's what Seamus Prendergast brings to the table. You know, he's very good in the air. Uh, whether he'll have the legs for you know maybe 70 minutes championship hurling, it's gone very warm out there now. But c certainly early in the game, you know, that physical strength, winning ball like that, and and uh, that's what he brings to the Watford team. Well, we were asking the question earlier: who was going to be taking the freeze? Porrick Manny's has gone out to take this one, so you'd anticipate an attempt for a point and the usual excellent result from the 19-year-old. Remember, he was playing minor last year, minor captain for Waterford, I think he was. It's a really good start, a goal and two then after five minutes of play. Waterford fast out of the blocks, you're looking for the Galway response now as Joe Canning tries to go out and win the puck out, Andy Smith has it, fires in the shot, that's a good one, that's over the bar. If one Port Dumna man couldn't get it, there was always another one coming by. Galway's opening score comes in the sixth minute. Yeah, and Andy Smith, you know, well known as a wing forward but has played midfield now in the last uh, this is his third game in a row to play in the middle of the field for Galway and I think it suits his style more he's better facing the ball and a uh, great score there oh that puck out has gone straight there to James Regan and that's returned with interest first point of the match here on his first championship start his second point in the championship well this was a dreadful puck out here by Clinton Hennessy Attempting to play it short and safe, but that wasn't safe, that was very careless. Waterford back on the attack again. That's a bit better, Kevin Moran coming through here. And blocked by the falling body there of Shane Kavanagh. Still a bit of pressure on, eventually it's David Collins falling to the ground, helped out there by David Burke, away towards Andy Smith. Hand passing it down along the wing here. Here's Joe Canning. Middle of the park, huge one down towards Damian Hayes. Going across to try and take it, there is Noel Connors, effectively flattened by Hayes. Free out to Waterford. Yeah, I see Joe Canning out at wing forward now, switch with Irla Tanyan who's gone inside and there's a foul by Damien Hayes. Young James Regan there, lovely score to settle him there after a bad tuck out, he's only minor two years ago and uh, we'd be claiming him a little bit and awfully, his dad is from Banner in my hometown, his dad Sean, probably watching on today. Well they're watching Paulic Mahoney right now, this has possibilities! Wow! just inches to the right of the post could so air very nearly have nestled in the bottom right hand corner there of James Skell's goal that was a really good goal chance very nearly or did he get the stick to it the goalkeeper the umpires had a look at it close wide and maybe even a slight touch off to the defender coming across but just to go back to the previous chance there Kevin Moran had I thought Shane Kavanagh was very brave he dived full length and took the slitter into face guard and saved a certain goal up next is a free to Waterford, which is going to be taken by 38-year-old Tony Brown. Well, in fact, he's leaving it to uh, Porik Mahoney. And they come in with a towel immediately there. Yeah, and Ger, this young man as well, as, as you said earlier, so impressive from Freeze in the Munster final and uh, half Tony Brown's age. <laughs> Interesting there to see the two of them tussling over who's going to take it. But uh, He's only 19 and it's only his third championship yeah, match. Yeah, he's a very, very accomplished free taker. You probably missed this one now after all. <laughs> No, he hasn't. Spot on. Second point for Porik Mahoney. And the Waterford Miners did well, of course, last night, and there's a very good underage programme coming through, so irrespective of what happened in the Munster final just two weeks ago, there's another generation of Waterford hurlers on the way. Puck out by James Skell. Down towards Joe Canning once again. As Michael Venture, the Italian has now drifted into full forward. Here's Ger Farraher blocked there that time it came off Seamus Prendergast in came Andy Smith Joe Canning there hooked taken back once again Kelly firing it Shane Welch trying to keep it in play failing to do so just not well delivered well the difficulty now is of course Shane Welch is very much on his own up front short puck out has been taken as Galway's corner forwards have drifted back and there's a lack of concentration there on the part of Adrian Cullinan should have been able to hold that and play it down the field, shake of the head. John McIntyre won't be too pleased with that. Pressure back on his goal area. This to be taken by Shane O'Sullivan. 50 yeah. metres or thereabouts. Davy Fitzgerald will be very happy with the encouraging start. Getting it just sufficiently forward here for Seamus Prendergast. Oh, didn't really do anything with that. 
Cullinan's clearance way down the field towards Damien Hayes might come to him yet Connors is after him Hayes still dishes it off there towards Chair Farraher hitting it off his right and the umpires say yeah just inside the left hand post good point by Chair Farraher really had a starring role in Limerick a couple of weeks ago against Cork he got enough space there hit it really cleverly and smartly inside that upright Puck out again towards Seamus Prendergast. Runs on, everybody's appealing for it. Barry Kelly, the linesman on the far side, says it's going to be a Galway ball. Well, they were rocked earlier on, Galway. Then they've got their three points. Only a goal between them. Both sides tempting now to build on what they've been doing in the last few minutes. And that's hit in from way out the field by Joe Canning. Is yet really to settle into his rhythm in this match. Yeah, the Galway have obviously, you know, maybe earmarked Tony Brown again. Tip tried to do it with Noel McGrath last day, it didn't work, but Cannon has the ability to put those balls over the bar, and uh, Tony Brown will have to be tired than that. From Clinton Hennessy's much longer puck out this time towards Kevin Moore, and it runs on towards Porik Mahoney. John Milan was making himself available, it's Mahoney instead, and that has just uh, fallen away at the last moment outside the right hand upright. So it remains 1-3 three to three points. Galway now hoping to win the next puck out, delivered by James Skell, the 25-year-old from Capitagal. All the way down. Joe Gantley's coming across to try and take it in his stride, didn't quite manage it. Instead, it's picked up here by the man in the corner, Tony Brown. On as far as Stephen Malumphy, 50 metres from the target when he strikes and strikes with care and accuracy that'll do Malumphy's confidence a lot of good he was out of sorts in the Munster final but he's made it 1-4 to 3 points and of course he's the team captain yeah and Jared, that's what you have to do if you bring men out to field and get possession they have to carry it into space and put it over there's no point poking it into where their own man is loose and that's a great score by Stephen Malumphy again they try to target Joe Canning from the puck out and it lands between Joe and Tony Brown and Tony does enough Diagonally across here towards Porik Mahoney. Breaks on there towards Fergal Moore instead. Now Ger Farraher lets it run beyond him. Cross came Brick Welch. And Brick Welch challenged by Damien Hayes. Still challenged by Damien Hayes. Bricks on the ground. Hayes is advancing.